Good morning. Welcome to Grace Bible Church. This is the part of the service where we celebrate the Lord's Supper. So we'll take a few minutes and talk about who Jesus is and what he did when he went to the cross. Um, and if you need a Bible, there are men that would love to put one in your hand. So go ahead and raise your hand and they'll hand it out. Um, today we're going to be speaking from 1 John again. I know many of you guys know that I preached 1 John last week. And there's a phrase, a verse that has been in my head all week that I've been meditating on. And I couldn't put it down. And so I wanted to spend some time this morning as a group meditating on it. So turn with me to 1 John chapter 4. And I want to talk to you about two facets of God's love. 1 John 4.10 is the verse that has been ringing in my ears um, for more than a week, but really for this last week. So read it with me. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us. And he sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. In this verse, he is saying, do you want to know what love is? It has nothing to do with our love for God. You may think you know love, Christian, by your love for God, but that isn't love. In fact, a few verses later, he tells us that our love wouldn't even exist if he did not love us first. He says in verse 19, we love because he first loved us. And so John gives us the three most precious words in all of scripture. He loved us. He loved us. And the first facet of that love is the object. So let's break down these three amazing words. He, God, is creator. He's unlike creatures. He's self-existent. He depends on nothing outside of himself for his existence. But everything he has created is dependent on him for its being. The Lord sustains everything he has made, upholding the world by the word of his power. We could be blinked out of existence and the universe would go on. But if God were to cease to exist, everything else would cease to exist as well. He has no beginning. He has no end. He is not confined, confined by spatial limitations. He is infinite, existing without boundaries. His knowledge, his acts, and his presence cannot be limited. That is he. He is the self-existent, infinite creator of us. And he loved. He has great affection for. He has great care for. He loved. Love is kind of a funny word. Because we can say we love things on varying levels. I love Mexican food. I love my pets. I love my parents. I love my kids. I love my wife. When you see the object of my love, you almost automatically know what level of love I have for those different things. God loves us. Us. We are God's creation, and we've sinned against him, and we're running from him. Romans 5 says that we are weak sinners and enemies of God. Jesus describes man this way in Mark 7. For from within, out of our hearts, out of the heart of man, proceed evil thoughts, sexual immoralities, thefts, murders, adulteries, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. All these evil things proceed from within and defile the man. Colossians 1.21 tells us that without God acting, we are alienated and enemy in mind and in evil deeds. Imagine loving that. This is not a loyal dog or family or a good meal. God pointed his affection at something much more offensive. He commands us to love our enemies because he loved us and we were enemies of him, which leads us to the next facet, the act of God's love. When he had this affection for us, when God loved us, what did that cause him to do? When we love things, it causes us to do things. What did God's love for us cause 
him to do for us. That's the rest of this verse. It caused him to send his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Keeping the analogy going, we may feed our dog, eat our Mexican food, call our moms on Mother's Day, care for our kids, or center our lives around support of our spouses. But what God did for us is so much more. The act of love that God did for us shows us the kind of love he has. And this is a love that none of us can even really comprehend. He came down from heaven, lived a holy and perfect life among men. He came as a baby and lived the life we could not live. He talked to us. He walked with us. He corrected much of our thinking about him. He was patient. He was kind. He could not have been more loving in his time on earth. But that is not what this passage tells us about his love. That isn't even mentioned when he says what his love is. What's mentioned is he was the propitiation for our sins. It says that he turned away his wrath towards our sins by offering a gift of eternal life and communion with him. He was the sacrifice we needed to have a restored relationship with him. He bore the wrath of our sins, so we don't have to. He was stained by sin. God was stained by our sin, so his death on the cross could be the atonement. God loves us and showed that love at the cross. These are sweet words. Do you believe these words? Do you put your trust in these words? If these words, if you are one that puts your trust in these words and these words describe you, please take communion this morning. But if you don't understand what it means to be in the love of God, to put your trust in God as the only way for salvation, to have a right relationship with him through this act of love, please let the cup and the bread pass and see me or someone after the service and hear what this means. Our Savior is so sweet because he loved us. Men, please hand out the elements this morning. Take communion on your own and remember what it means that Christ went to the cross to show us his love for us. I'll be back in closing prayer.